Hi guys, and welcome to the third video in this series on making a 3D endless runner in Unity. In this video, we will be creating the obstacles, spawning one on each tile which will restart the game if the player touches it. Before we get started, don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss another video. Without further ado, let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is go to our prefabs folder and open up the grand tile by double clicking on it. I'll right click and create a new empty game object, which I'll press F2 to rename and call it the obstacle spawn left. I'll set its position on the X to negative 3.3, position on the Y to 0.5 so that the obstacle stands on the ground, and its position on the Z to 10 to move it to the very back of the tile. I'll duplicate this twice using Ctrl D and call them Obstacle Spawn Middle and Obstacle Spawn Right. For the middle one, I'll set its position on the X to 0, and for the right, I'll set its position on the X to 3.3. .3. Next, I'll exit out of the Grand Tile Prefab by hitting the back button over here, then right click in the hierarchy and create a new cube, so 3D object cube. I'll press F2 and call this obstacle. I'll right click on the transform component and hit reset. Then I'll set its position on the Y to 0 0.5 and its scale on the Z to 10 over three, meaning that it will take up exactly one third of the width of our ground tile. This will be important in the future if we want to have some tiles spawn multiple obstacles so that they line up seamlessly. Finally, I'll drag it into our prefabs folder to turn it into a prefab, then delete it from our scene. With that done, we can now go to the script folder and double click on our grand tile to open it up in Visual Studio. Once it opens up, go down to the bottom and add a new variable, which will be public game object obstacle prefab. This creates a variable type of game object called obstacle prefab, which is accessible from anywhere, including the inspector. To check this, let's quickly go back to the editor and assign our obstacle prefab to the ground tile. To do this, I'll go to the prefabs folder and open up the ground tile. And then under the ground tile script, you'll see a slot for the obstacle prefab. I'll drag and drop the obstacle prefab that we just made into there. With that done, we can now return back to our code. We're going to create a function for spawning obstacles. So to do that, type void spawn obstacle, open and close some parentheses, and then some curly braces. Inside the curly braces, we're going to need to choose a random point to spawn the obstacle. Then we'll spawn the obstacle at that position. To choose a random point, all we have to do is select one of the three spawn point game objects that we created at the start of this video. If we return back to the editor, we can see that they range from the third to the fifth child object. But remember, we start counting from zero, so the plane would be zero, the next spawn point one, so that means that the first obstacle spawn point is the second child, and the last one is the fourth child. With that in mind, let's go back to the script. We're going to say int for integer obstacle spawn index is equal to random dot range, and then we're going to give it two and five. The reason why we're using five as the last number is this function gives us a random number between the two inputs, including the first one, but excluding the last one. Don't ask me why, but that's just the way it is. So with a random number between two and four inclusive, we can now say transform spawn point is equal to transform to get the transform of this component dot get child, and then we give it our obstacle spawn index. This returns a game object, but we specified a transform here, 
So to get the transform component of that child, I'm going to add dot transform at the end. That simply returns this transform component of any of these three obstacle spawn points. To spawn the obstacle, all we have to say is instantiate, which is Unity's fancy way of saying spawn, then give it the obstacle prefab as the object to spawn, spawn point dot position as the position to spawn it, quaternion dot identity as its rotation, this means it will have no rotation, and finally transform to set its parent. Remember, transform simply means this object's transform, so when the ground tile is destroyed, the obstacle will be destroyed along with it. This prevents a buildup of thousands of obstacles in the level if tiles are being destroyed, but their obstacles are not. If you don't understand any of what I just said, don't worry about it, as you'll understand it once we start testing the game. Finally, in the start function, near the top, we'll call this function by typing spawn obstacle and with parentheses. Now we can go back to the editor, just give it a moment to load. Then I'll make the game view a little bit bigger and hit play to test it out. The obstacles are spawning, that's great, but the player seems to be moving a bit too slowly for me, so I'm going to go to the hierarchy, exit the ground tile, and select our player. In here, I'll increase its speed to maybe something like 10, and its horizontal multiplier to maybe 1.7. Now if I click back into the game view, this is moving at a much better speed for me. I'll exit play and make sure I put those values back into the player movement script as anything you edit during play mode will not save. You will also have noticed that when we hit an obstacle, nothing happens. To fix this, let's go to our scripts folder, right click, go to create, C sharp script, and I'll call this obstacle. Give it a moment to compile, and once that's done, double click to open it up in Visual Studio. We're going to need one variable, type of player movement, and I'll call this player movement with a lowercase p. In the start function, let's set player movement equal to game object dot find object of type. And inside angular brackets, I'll type player movement, then end it with parentheses and a semicolon. This looks for an object of the type player movement. Remember, this is attached to our player and sets the variable equal to that. Next, I'll create a new function, which will be void on collision enter. This function is called automatically when two objects collide. In here, we want to kill the player. To kill the player, let's go back to the player movement script. So I'll go to the editor, then double click on our player movement script. Top, I'll add a new variable. This will be type of boolean, so bool, and I'll call this alive. By default, I'll set its value to true. At the top of the fixed update function, I'll add a line saying if not alive, the exclamation mark means not, then return. This simply means if the variable alive is not true, stop running the function. If you remember, this function is where we move the player, so this means that if the player is not alive, they will not be able to move. Next, we'll create a new function. At the bottom, I'll just type public void die, open and close parentheses, and inside curly braces, we'll set alive equal to false. And we also want to restart the game. To do this, we need to be using Unity's scene manager, so scroll right to the top and add using Unity engine dot scene management. This allows us to go back to the die function 
and we can now say scene manager dot load scene. We'll give it the scene manager dot get active scene dot name. Essentially, this means that the scene manager will load the scene that we are currently in, or in other words, the game will restart. Now, if we go back to the obstacle script, in the on collision enter, we first need to check that the object that collided was the player. So to do that, we'll say if collision to get the input dot game object dot name is equal to player in quotes. This checks that the object that collided with the obstacle is called player. And if it is, we can call player movement dot die, which is the function that we just made. I'll quickly move the comment up here so that it makes more sense. Another time that we would want to restart the game is if the player falls off the edge of a platform. To do this, we can go back to the player movement script, and in the update function, underneath the horizontal input, we'll add if, I'm pressing tab twice to insert this snippet, so if transform dot position to get the position of this player, dot y, y is the vertical position, remember? And then we'll say is less than negative five. So this will only be true if the player has fallen off the platform. Then we, in this case, we will also call the die function. This means if the player's vertical position is less than negative five, we will kill the player. With that done, make sure you save the script and then return back to the editor. Go to our prefabs folder and in our obstacle, make sure that you add the obstacle script to it. You can simply go add component and search for obstacle. With that done, let's exit out of the obstacle prefab and hit play to test the game. You'll see that any time I hit an obstacle, the game simply restarts. Now if I fall off the edge, the game also restarts. Something that I believe would be nice to have would be a delay between hitting the obstacle and restarting the game. To do that, we'll go back to the player movement script. Under the die function, I'll create a new function which will be void restart. This will be responsible for restarting the game. I'll cut and paste our scene manager dot load scene line into this function and that's all that we'll be adding to it. Now in the die function I'll call the restart with a delay by saying invoke and then in quotation marks restart make sure you spell this correctly and then as a second argument so with a comma I'll add two. This will call the restart function after two seconds. Back in the editor I think it would be nice to give our obstacles a different colour. So I'll go to the materials folder, right click, create, material, and I'll call this obstacle underscore matte, short for material. I'll set its albedo, which is its colour, to red. Finally, I'll open up the obstacle prefab, go to our materials folder, and drag and drop our obstacle material onto the obstacle. To make testing a little bit nicer, I'll hover over the game view, then hit shift space to maximise it. Now I'll hit play. And you can see that we have a nice ground. We have obstacles which are red and restart the game after two seconds when the player touches them. If the player falls off the edge, the game will also restart after two seconds. One big problem is that the obstacles spawn right from the first tile, so the player doesn't have enough time to prepare, and sometimes an obstacle will be unavoidable. We'll be fixing that in the touching up video coming in two weeks, so stay tuned for that. That's all we'll be covering in this tutorial. Next week, we'll look at spawning coins for the player to collect and gain points. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.